Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. In this video, I want to do a very specific shootout between the FabFilter Pro L2 and Music Hack Master Plan. Now, both of these are limiters, but they are very particular limiters. The FabFilter Pro L2 is the limiter that I used for many, many years. It was my go-to limiter for reference masters as well as final masters. However, I recently got my hands on the Music Hack Master Plan and I have switched over to using that for my reference masters and my final masters. And I want to explain why, but I also want to shoot these two out so that we can hear the differences. Now, before getting into into the shootout, I do have to explain how this is set up because there are some caveats. It was not quite as easy to do this shootout as I was expecting. I was thinking, okay, I just do the same amount of gain reduction on both, set them in fairly transparent positions, and compare, right? However, what I found is that the output level in terms of LUFs ended up being a little different depending on what the input actually was, like the source material. And it's because they use very different mechanisms in order to create the loudness. So, the way this is set up is I have three mixes here. Each of them is going down to this submix in which we have FabFilter Pro L2. FabFilter Pro L2 is set up in the general position that I typically have used. So in this particular case, it's 9.5 dB of gain on the input. The style is modern. The look ahead is 0.17 milliseconds. The attack and release are in their standard default positions. Transient linking is 58%, oversampling 4x. And there is one additional 0 dB of headroom on the very output. So this is about where I usually have been when I've been using FabFilter Pro L2. Two. Master plan, different setup. The master plan circuit is not gain linear. It's a clipping mechanism with a limiting mechanism that combine in order to create a loudness with less singular change to either dynamic or harmonics. So in other words, you get a little bit of clipping and a little bit of limiting mixing together to create what in the designer's mind is a more transparent sound, although we will be investigating that idea. So in order to get this to be more transparent, I found that I needed to take the input down and push the loudness up. Now, if we do a quick little bit of math here, you'll notice that minus 6 dB and 14.3 dB do not add up to 9.5 dB of gain. What I found is that I was not getting the same measurements, so I ended up backing off master plan by approximately a dB. However, like I said, this is going to change based on the source material. So when we get to the second mix and the third mix, I'm going to have to add a little bit more gain to master plan in order to make them come out to be the same luffs or as close to the same luffs as I can get. Now, on the very, very back end of both of these, I'm going to have a nine and a half dB gain uh, reduction here so that I'm not blowing out your speakers. All right, let's start with this first record here. It's an Afro House record. I'm going to play it. Uh, just as it goes, I did a little tiny bit of pre-treatment here, but I didn't really spend a lot of time on it because that's not the idea of this shootout. So let's hear what the mix sounded like on its own. Let's turn on FabFilter Pro L2. All right, and now let's turn on Master Plan. Now let's flip back to FabFilter Pro L2, switch over to Master Plan a little bit quicker. So, in what 
ways are these different? You're probably thinking, hey, they're pretty darn similar. Well, I would agree. I would say, just generally speaking, they're very close overall, but there are some minor, minor differences. The first is that the FabFilter Pro L2 feels a little bouncier to me here. It's a, it feels a little bit more dynamic. Whereas Master Plan feels a little bit fuller. It feels like there's just a little bit more substance there. Uh, both of them, I think, are doing a really excellent job. My overall feeling is that there's something slightly more satisfying about the master plan version to listen to, and I think that's coming from that slight bit of fullness. Now, in terms of comparing to the original mix, I think that the Pro L2 is pretty darn similar. If I were to really, really nitpick, I would say that there's maybe like the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little bit of thinning happening in the lower mids, somewhere around like 200 hertz, and I'm talking about like maybe 0.1 dB ever so slightly. That might just simply be an effect of the kick catching against the limiter. Master Plan, I don't feel like has that. I feel like it's got sort of the opposite thing going on. It feels like there's a broad fullness maybe centering around 600 or 700 hertz that feels like is being added in to create a slightly more forward sound. The transients sit very differently as well. The transients are getting rounded in FabFilter Pro L2. They feel like they're incurring very, very little distortion in terms of harmonics, but are getting changed in terms of dynamics. Whereas Master Plan, it feels like there's a little less change in terms of the leading edge of the kick. It feels like it's being preserved a little bit better dynamically, but it feels like there's a little bit of color happening there, a little tiny bit of very, very subtle clipping that I'm not hearing in the Pro L2. I don't think any of these things inherently make one better or worse. I think it's just a matter of what do you prefer? Do you prefer a little tiny bit of color, but preserving the sense of dynamic and fullness, or do you prefer a little bit uh, less color, maybe a little bit of opening of the sound, but something that's overall generally a little bit more transparent? Well, for me, <laughs> It was the former. I prefer Master Plan because I feel like it's giving me something and it's enhancing what's there. So let's play this one more time and then let's move on to a different mix. All right, here's without either. Master Plan. Fab filter. Although to be honest, I can actually, now that I'm giving it a second listen, I can hear a tiny, tiny bit of clipping on the Fab Filter Pro L2 as well. Uh, maybe just a hair, hair less of it, but again, we're really, really splitting hairs there. So, okay, let's jump over to a completely different mix here. Now, like I said, I've got in the comments section, I got to turn up Master Plan by about 0.3 dB in order to make this a fair comparison, uh, more similar levels. So let's listen to the mix itself, and you'll hear that the content of the mix is very different. Then I roll my cat on a modern day. They say love is blind and he can't see like he too far away. He say that he love me, wanna cuff me like I caught a case. Boy, go get your millions up, ain't rich enough to call me back. All right, cool. Let's start with Master Plan this time. Then I roll my cat on a modern day. They say love is blind and he can't see like he too far away. He say that he love me, wanna cuff me like I caught a case. Boy, go get your millions up, ain't rich enough to call me back. All right, now Fab Filter. Then I roll my cat on a modern day. They say love is blind and he can't see like he too far away. He say that he love me, wanna cuff me like I caught a case. Boy, go get your millions up, ain't rich enough to call me back. So here I feel like in Master Plan, you can hear that the vocal is being helped out a little bit. It feels like there's something tonally that's happening that's just giving the vocal a little bit more weight, which is subtle, but also there. At the same time, I feel like the top end ever so slightly recedes a little bit with Master Plan. Then I roll my cat on a modern day. They say love is blind and he can't see like he too far away. He say that he love me, wanna cuff me like I caught a case. Boy, go get your millions up, ain't rich and Then I roll my cat on a modern day. They 
say love is blind and he can't see like he too far away. He say that he love me. I still feel like maybe the level is also a little mismatched. I'm feeling like Master Plan is maybe like 0.2 dB lower than Fab Filter, 0.1 dB. It's pretty close, but it sits a little different tonally speaking. Now, let's jump to a third mix here. This is a mix that I did in 2011. It is definitely not my best work relative to what I'm doing today, but I thought it would be interesting to show what a maybe less than perfect mix would sound like. There's a lot of stuff going on here that I wish I could go back in time and change, but the way the low end is sitting and the way the upper mids are sitting are really not so great here. So we're going to see what happens when we try this with the different limiters. Let's do the fab filter first, and I'm going to turn this down ever so slightly, just to match. And now, master plan. So you can hear that that change in the mid-range in Master Plan is kind of fixing this mix up a little bit. It's smoothening it out, smoothening, smoothing, smoothing it out a little bit, but it is also coloring it up a little bit, whereas Fab Filter is being a little bit more transparent, but that's not helping quite as much. It ends up feeling a little bit smaller because things are not sitting in terms of the frequency spectrum the way that they should be, particularly in the mids. So they really are two kind of different things. Now, for me, in my workflow, if I've got Master Master plan on in my mix template, which I do, then I can kind of mix into it toward the latter stages of my mix, in which case all of these slight changes with that little bit of clipping that comes in and that slight shift in the mid range can become really strong assets to the sound. I happen to like it quite a bit, especially because I feel like those are two places where my mixes could use a little bit of extra love, just getting a little bit more solidity into that like broad mid range, like center mid range area, and also not being afraid to use a little bit more saturation and color than maybe what I'm typically used to using. The other thing is that Master Plan is thought of in a very different way than Fab Filter. Fab Filter with the Pro L2 is very specifically dedicated to being hi, I'm a limiter. And all of these different parameters that can be adjusted are all very specific to the limiting mechanism and getting that to be as transparent as possible. Master Plan, on the other hand, is not really the same thing. Master Plan says, okay, when you start pushing into a limiter, things change besides just the actual limiting mechanism. The tone will start to shift. So let's put in a whole bunch of things that can compensate for things outside of just the limiting mechanism, but the actual tone shifts that can occur within the process of getting something loud, which to me is a really interesting thought process and a really useful one. So some of the things that can change are the width. A lot of the times when you start really pushing into a limiter, the stereo image starts to collapse a little bit. So this gives us a widener built right in so that we can compensate for that. Another thing that tends to happen, sometimes the lower mids get a little bit stuffy. So there's this clean button, which is going to open up the low mids, do a little attenuation there in order to get rid of some of the mud that can be incurred when you start shoving everything up into the same dynamic space. Similarly, things can sometimes get really harsh when you start pushing into the dynamic space because your lows start to get attenuated first. They take up more energy at equal apparent level. So that kick and that big bass tend to get tucked and it exaggerates the upper mids sometimes. So this calm thing is meant to reduce that upper mid strain that can occur. So here's a really good use of it right here. This record to me already sounds like it's a little bit harsh in the upper mids. So clicking on this calm button, really, really useful.
Now, the other thing that can start happening is the lows can start getting eaten up. So if that's the case, then maybe we want to push a little bit more low end. So let's add just like half a dB to a dB of low end and maybe pull back the overall level like 0.2 dB, something like that. In addition, we get some other really cool effects. We get uh, a high frequency boost in case the saturation that is built into Master Plan is rolling off too much highs, which here it's just a little, little bit, it feels like. And then there's some other things built in. There's a smooth compressor, which is meant to ease up on the clipping. It puts a safety compressor in front of the circuit. Uh, I sometimes use it. Most of the time I prefer without. Uh, this thick control adds a little bit of weight in case that's needed. I also typically don't find myself using this too often, but I do find myself using this tape thing. It does something kind of nice to the low end. just in very, very subtle proportions, sometimes even uh, off. So it says tight bass on the left, warm glow on the right. I think that's pretty accurate. Sometimes if I'm using this on, say, just drum bus, I'll have this turn to the right and I'll boost highs into it. That can be a really cool effect. But I think in this particular case, I prefer it where we were kind of at. So just adding a little bit of compensation high end and mostly being over to the left here. So let's bypass the effects here. Let's just listen to the mix and then bring it back on. And you'll notice that when I flipped it on, if you weren't paying attention, you might not have even noticed that I flipped it on, except that maybe a little bit of color and smoothness sort of showed up out of nowhere. So this time I'm going to let you know that I'm going to switch it. We're going to play it without. We're going to play it with. Goes out to the So all these EQs and saturations and compressor effects all allow me to compensate for the actual side effects of the loudness, which to me is more useful than simply being able to adjust how the limiter is acting in and of itself. Because if I was just relying on the limiter, I would have to be putting EQs and compressors in front of the limiter, requiring me to use more plugins, slowing down my workflow, and just in general, I really like this. However, all I'm saying here really is that I personally prefer Master Plan. It is in my mix template, it is what I'm using, and now that I've gotten used to using it, it's pretty much all that I use. Uh, that's not to disparage FabFilter Pro L2, which I do think is a great product and I used for many, many years. They're really different beasts and I'm just stating my preference here, but I also wanted you to hear the differences yourself, make your own determinations. So anyway, if you dig this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification so you get notified. And lastly, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice, we are musicians, sound is our instrument, and I will catch you next time.